Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today we are going to learn a new method for solving a quadratic function. So far we learned how to use factoring method to solve a quadratic function and I would still suggest people to use factoring method if it works rather than using something more complicated. So but there are equations which we cannot solve by using the factoring method and I'm going to start with one of those examples and then I will uh, introduce the quadratic formula and we'll talk about the quadratic formula briefly and we'll then use the quadratic formula to solve this particular quadratic equation okay so let us look at this example so far we have covered uh, four types and I would like to call this as type 5 so guys if you have been following my videos in the past then you would know the, why I'm using type 5 because we already covered four types prior to this so I have this example 2x square minus x equals to 4 okay it's a quadratic function uh, and we want to solve for x we want to solve find the value for x so you already know that the first thing we would like to do here is we would like to bring everything to the left hand side and uh, so that it looks like a standard form and then we can try to write the factors okay let's go ahead and try to do that well you can simply subtract 4 from both sides that way you can get a 0 on the right hand side and on the left hand side I have 2x square minus x minus 4 right this is in the standard form with 0 on the right hand side and the left hand side looks like ax squared plus bx plus c now from my previous videos you know the factoring method to factor a polynomial like this what we do simply is we take the coefficient 2 and multiply by negative 4 so what do I get I get a negative 8 and then we try to come up with two factors of negative 8 guys remember this is called the splitting the middle term I have uploaded more videos on factoring as well like all the detailed step-by-step -step process of factoring which also includes splitting the middle term so if you are not confident with splitting the middle term guys I highly recommend you guys to go back and watch that video as well so here i have negative 8 and i want to come up with two factors of negative 8 that add up to this negative 1 right there's this invisible one so let us kind of write down some factors and see if we can come up with two factors that add up to negative 1 so the first one that comes to my mind is negative 1 and 8 well i can switch that negative sign to here but it's still uh, i'm still going to get negative 8 but if i add these two there's no way i'm going to get a negative 1 so this does not work then the other one is uh, 2 and negative 4. Well, 2 plus negative 4 will give me negative 2. So I don't want negative 2, I want a negative 1. It's not going to work. Then the other one I can use maybe negative 2 and positive 4. Well, if I multiply these two, I'll get negative 8. But if I add those two, I will get a positive 2. And I don't want still, I don't still want a positive 2. I want a negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to ignore that. Guys, I'm running already out of options because I cannot write any two other factors for that negative 8, right? So we got to stop right here and we got to ask ourselves, hey, can we actually factor this polynomial? And the, the answer to that is, no, we cannot factor this polynomial. So if we cannot factor this polynomial, then from the knowledge, from the tools that we already have, it means that we cannot actually solve this uh, quadratic function, correct? So now we are kind of stuck. So when we are stuck, we got to figure out if there are any other ways, if there are any other formulas or other techniques to actually solving this quadratic function. And uh, we have a method, we have a technique, we have a nice formula that helps us to solve uh, something like this where we cannot actually factor. Okay, so guys, I wanted to start with an example and I wanted to show you why one uh, wants to use something different uh, because in this case the methods that we already know do not work okay so again I would like to remind you please try to learn factoring well and try to use factoring rather than using the formula that we're going to talk about but if the factoring does not work then one has to use the formula the formula that I'm going to talk about is called the quadratic formula here I'm not showing you how we get this formula guys if you really want to know how we actually get this formula because it's not a magical formula it is something that can be derived that we can figure out if you really want to know how to do that please write that give me feedback in your comments and I'll be happy to actually go over all the steps showing you how we actually get this formula okay so here I'm just gonna write it and then we're simply gonna use the formula so the quadratic formula looks like this so I have what is called the quadratic formula 
the quadratic formula is used for solving a quadratic uh, function that looks like this ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero of course we know a should not be equal to zero because if a is zero then this is not a quadratic function anymore so we want to make sure that a is not zero and then the quadratic formula is gives the value for x which is negative b plus and minus why plus and minus because we know there's always going to be two solutions right b squared minus 4ac over 2a uh, so excuse me guys I, when i say there's always going to be two solutions what i actually meant was that we can have at most two solutions right but we already know that we may also have one solution and sometimes we may have no real solutions and we will actually see all that while we look deep or we kind of dig deeper into this whole quadratic formula piece so guys this is the quadratic formula that we have to use in order to find the value for x and the one thing that i want to point out here before we start using it and then in the next video i'm going to like go in detail about that piece guys this piece inside the radical is also a very useful and important piece and that is called the discriminant discriminant and sometimes people like to just simply use d for the discriminant guys we're going to talk about this discriminant and what does that signify in terms of the solutions of a quadratic function in my next video but in this video let's just use this formula to solve this equation right here okay and again if you want to know how we get this let me know and i can go over that whole steps so all the process to actually solving this x okay so let's go ahead and start solving this equation guys once this is transformed into a standard form which it is already here then what we want to do first is so let us start with a solution here transforming this into a standard form is part of the solution we tried the factoring method it did not work then now we are decided uh, we have decided that we want to use uh, we're going to use the quadratic formula so we're going to start with identifying the key variables which is a b and c because you, you can see a b a and c which are like which are uh, which are used in the solving this uh, um, this equation for x okay so first we identify a a is positive 2 right we compare this with the standard form x squared plus bx plus c so a is positive 2 b is there's an invisible one so it's a negative one guys be careful there's a negative as well so you have to have a negative one we cannot ignore that negative one and then i have my c which is not just positive 4 it's a negative 4 because i have there's a negative here so you have to bring that negative as well okay once a b and c are identified then what we're going to do is we are going to rewrite the quadratic formula which is already written here but it's a good habit to actually first write the quadratic formula and then start substituting the values okay so i'm going to write x equals to negative b plus minus i'm just rewriting the quadratic formula b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a and now we are going to substitute the values carefully guys there's a lot of negatives here so we have to be careful when we are working or dealing with negatives so i have x equals to negative b so there's already a negative here and then b is still a negative so i'm going to put that in parentheses then there's a plus and minus and then square root of b square minus 4ac so b is negative one whenever you have negative numbers you put them in parentheses square it minus four times a is positive two i'm still putting it in parentheses guys it's up to you whether you want to put the positive quantities in parentheses or not but i'm going to put it in parentheses then i have times c c is negative four so i'm going to put that in parentheses as well and then i'm going to divide this whole thing by what two times a right two times which is two times two okay that is my uh, once i have this formula then i substitute these values now we're going to simplify guys before you start using calculators please try to simplify as much as you can and then once we cannot simplify any further then we may want to use the calculator okay now let's just follow through the steps here negative times negative is positive so positive one plus minus and i'm going to try to simplify this without using a calculator so negative one squared is positive one then negative four times two times negative four so negative negative becomes positive already four times four is 16 16 times two is 32 okay guys it's four times two which is eight eight times four is 32 it's up to you how you want to actually multiply them but all you have to be careful with is that they are all multiplied together and negative negative is also multiplied so that gives me a positive and downstairs i have two times two which is 
which is four. So I did not really need a calculator to simplify this. Guys, if you want to use a calculator to simplify this, it's up to you, but I suggest that for something as simple as this, just try to do it without using a calculator, okay? Now let us see where this leads us to. We have x equals to, and we're gonna to try to simplify this a little bit further. One plus minus, well, we can still simplify one plus 32, which is 33 and divided by the four. Guys, when I look at this, what I have to ask us, what do I have to ask myself and what we got, you guys have to ask yourselves is that this radical, this piece inside the uh, radical, which is, sorry, the radical 33, can this be simplified or not? This is something that we have to ask ourselves. Can we simplify this? And we know how to simplify radicals. What we do with them is we start by writing the radical the number inside the radical and we try to come up with two factors of that number so that at least one of them is a perfect square. We know 33 by itself is not a perfect square. So we kind of try to think of two numbers so that one of them is a perfect square here. Uh, I don't think we have too many options. So one and 33, well, that does not do anything. So we don't really care too much about it. Uh, and then we have three and 11. And three and 11, none of them are perfect squares. So I think we cannot simplify and it does not have any other factors, right? So that means um, we cannot simplify this radical any further. What does that mean? That means we are, we are done. You can leave the final answer like this, or if you want to uh, write this up like as two different solutions, because here we have two different solutions, you can write it right, like this, one plus radical 33 over four. And then I have the other solution, which is kind of similar to this one, but there's instead of a plus, there's a minus radical 33 over four. And guys, if you remember from my previous video, uh, the radical solutions always occur as the conjugate pairs. Like if this is plus here, this is gonna be minus, and they're almost gonna look alike, except for the signs, okay? So you can leave the final answer like this, this is totally fine, or sometimes if you want to write it as two separate solutions, then you got to write it like this. And guys, here we cannot simplify it because we cannot find a perfect square, we cannot, and we cannot find the product of two numbers, even when one of them is a perfect square. So we got to leave it like this and we are done with solving this, uh, this particular equation. Guys, again, if you are working on a multiple choice test and you have the final answers in terms of decimals, then one has to use a calculator to simplify this radical 33 and then again, use a calculator to simplify and get the final answer in decimals. But most of the other times, you don't really need to convert it into decimals, leave it as radicals, but you have to simplify if you can. In this case, we cannot simplify any further, so that means less work for us, but so we gotta leave it like that, okay? So guys, I'm gonna stop here, and then in the next video, I'm gonna talk about uh, this discriminant piece, okay?